All right, well, Mama Bear and I got some decision to make and to do and talking to discuss. Got to figure yes. out how to move forward here. Yeah. I'm uh, a little disappointed to say the least. I, uh, disappointed I is an understatement. I don't deal with disappointment very well. No. I uh, like to be a rock star, so. I think I, I might uh, join you for a drink while we discuss this. Let's go have a drink. Everybody, I'm going to cut you loose. We're going to do some discussion and some collaborating. We'll be back with you for round two here soon. We'll figure out what we're doing next. Right. Until next time, I'll throw out. Bye. Good morning. Welcome back. It's not going to be a happy update here today. Uncle Drunk was in a way. Uncle Drunk was back to drinking. Um, I had a blowout yesterday with the excavator guy. And um, I'm going to save you some of the choice words I gave him. That's cool. It's doing great, baby. I'm going to help you now. Yeah, Moonshine and Dr. Pepper. Oh, it has a weight count of me right down. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Inside. Inside. Go. Good morning, baby. Good morning. Good Get. Morning. Try. Get out. Get in that you house. Do not fucking listen, my friend. Excuse me. I got this. Go. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. So, I got a little bit of a mess here. I uh, got some apologies to make. Uncle Drunkle lost his shit yesterday. Um, today's not quite day two. It's not quite day three. Kind of like day 2.5. Um, we had a couple small issues out here. Um, I tend to snap easy. It's one of my freaking problems in life. Any of you who've dealt with me intimately or in long periods of time or stressful events know that I can get a little worked up sometimes. I usually don't go too crazy with my behaviors and actions, but you know, once in a while, Uncle Drunkle gets a little funky. Um, unfortunately, last night I did jump off the wagon and got into my moonshine real heavy. I got really worked up. I needed to calm down. Um, I know a lot of people get drinking heavy liquor. It works all up. I, that's how I calm down. So I said it did for me. We at that point ain't touching shit. I need narcotics or heavy alcohol. So, not recommending it. So, we enough of all that said. I don't even remember my crying, emotional bullshit. Here's where we're at. Um, we got this lane cleared. This is where our garage is gonna be going. We're gonna be laying gravel through this whole area so it's all nice and clean um, for you know the path. This is gonna take a little time. It's gonna get smoothed out and just totally covered in with dirt with gravel here. Um, Dave came back this morning, um, admitted maybe we, we weren't on the same page on some things. Maybe a couple things he tried weren't the best idea in hindsight. And uh, we're gonna fix this no matter what, we're gonna move forward. Dave's a great guy. Um, never done me wrong in any way so you know love to work with them um we just want to get this thing fixed and done right so we're on the right track we had an agreement we came to today on a couple things he jumped right on the machine got right to it and freaking my mud pit's empty now uh it's empty of water come on boys so let's just do a little site survey um he created a second channel for the water to get out for me and we've got a new lane that's a straighter shot to the pond, so we're not making so many curves. So I guess in hindsight, I'm glad you did that, Dave. Um, a pond, it's gonna need a little time to heal. Um, you know, when you start getting into soup and muck, you know what I mean, you tend to stir things up. There's not a lot you can do about that. So, all right, this is a natural spring that comes down here. And it actually flows quite a bit of water, 24 hours a day, 365 every year, every day of the year. We got a tunnel underground here that runs through a trench that was kind of just a little baby trench going all the way to the pond. So what Dave did was he cleared a tr that trench way deeper out to the pond. That's why we're mucky right now. It's not as bad as I initially thought. I think I overreacted. My apologies there, Dave. Um, this here, we got a, Another trench created over here. Perfect. Um, see that drainage pipe over there? The black drainage pipe? Yep, good boy. Get your ball, Thor. Get your ball. Good boy. All right, so we got, oh, all right. So we're getting a little into the thick here. Be careful where and how I walk. So, 
this is flowing all out now. We got a deeper channel going out to the pond. This will all, you know, this won't look scarred for very long. Nature will cover this right over. All right, so now we're in clay. It's a fairly hard bottom. As you can see, I'm not sinking in too deep until I get right here in this liquidy shit. All right. We're gonna be putting cobblestone across all this, big, heavy, thick cobblestone, and then running gravel over the top of that. So the water will stay open over there. This will be a dry bed, cobblestone all through it. And this here raises up a little higher here than it was over there. Running the pipe underneath there and that little trench, cobble right over, run the gravel over to this area, summer's in here, and stop right here. Um, gravel will only be the top cap. You need some heavy, heavy, thick cobblestones to build a base in here. Might possibly even run some trees across that. Not sure. That's where I'm not, this is not my forte. This is Dave's gig. This is what he does. So he knows better than me on that one. Now we'll take it out to the back here. I'll show you what we got with the pond. Give him a lot of credit for coming out and being, doing the right thing this morning, being honest, admitting what he did wrong, admitting where the problem, you know, happened and saying he'll make it right no matter what and shake my hand, look at me in the eye while he did it. Huge, huge deal there for me. I, uh, I've been a piece of shit half my life and I've been an amazing person for half my life and I know the difference. And uh, I know how I behave and I acted when I was a piece of shit. And I know how I behave and act now. And, uh, you know, looking people in the eye, shaking their hand and telling them what I'm gonna do and following through, it's a big part of what I do these days. As it is for Dave, apparently and clearly, so. I say I'm gonna do something, I just fucking do it. If I say I can't do it or I'm not gonna do it, that's it, we're not doing it. I'm just kinda real solid on these matters. I know a lot of you told you I was gonna be freaking moving off grid and getting out in the middle of nowhere and making a hell of a little move and I think a lot of you probably doubted I was being serious about it. I was dead serious. We already had it all worked out. We just needed to get the funding in place. Once that happened, gangbusters. You know who was most mad at me for how fast we were pushing that process through? Our attorney. It got down to the wire where he told me, listen, buddy, I really don't have the time and I've got to take an early weekend. My brother's dying of stage four cancer and I was about this sensitive, ready? Bro, if you're too busy and you got to go handle it with your buddy, your brother who's dying, I understand. Hand it off to an attorney who can handle it now for us. Go take the time you need. You don't need this stress on your plate on top of, you know, hospice care and cancer treatment and shit. I need this done by the, before the weekend. And I understand you're in a situation, hand it off. Hand it off to a, a close associate, a partner, a friend, a, a unknown if it comes to it. Everybody's ready to pull the trigger on the deal. Only thing we're waiting on is purchaser's attorney. So we're making a cash deal, paying for it in full in cash. How is it taking months and months and months because our attorney can't come to the table Anyway, here's a pond. It mudded up some. What you doing, door boy? He loves getting his belly all wet. Hi, door boy. That's my go boy. So, fish will be fine. Frogs will be fine. Muddy water, don't bother them. I'm not being dramatic. Some of the mud's gonna kill them all. And Dave shut me down on that one, Kev. Fucking fish and frogs live through mud. Relax, bro. Okay, you're right. <laughs> yep. So, again, so what's going on is where you, you worked my channel back. Um, it's just, it's kind of, it's real swampy back there. So, you know, and there's a water flow that's, it's not a heavy flow. It's a real slow stream flow, and it's got a lot of time to pick up silt. And when you disturb that silt back in there, it just freaking flows as mud muddy water so it's gonna take some time to settle we got a river delta at the moment this here i don't know what we're gonna do with this we'll figure something out probably gonna have to put some freaking grass seed and trees or so something somewhere somehow because that's uh that's pulling up back there pretty good but whatever this here you can see still flowing 
it's just uh, it's flowing a little strangely. But you can see the flow coming through, and it's all flowing. That's why we're so muddy right here. All right, Chase, get out of there. Come on, you're making my pond muddy. So, there you have it. It's about 80 degrees out here right now. It's a nice breeze. Got some heavy, heavy thunderstorm clouds building up around us. It's kind of hit and miss where it's hitting right now. We're in the miss zone, so. Uh, as for our project here, we're gonna be letting this go. Uh, we can't get gravel now, unfortunately, till Tuesday at the earliest. And it's slim pickings. The gravel guy's got a big road project going on and we're gonna see what happens. That's because it's time to let this dry up with the mud and settle. And then we can come back down in here and start running stone so hopefully all all's well that ends well and in the end things will be fine and uh this isn't something i need to snap like my life depends on it over it's a fucking pond in a fucking mud pit why am i acting like this is my left leg because it's important to me to be honest with you this is my last stop on this rock the last place i'm gonna be it all ends right here so I want this to be the nicest place I have. And nice for Vicky too. She put a lot of time and an ungodly amount of money to make this all happen. So, it's the kids. This is an inheritance. This will stay in the family, hopefully, for generations. So, I want to make it really nice and leave it really nice. So, no harm, no foul. I'll be well in the end. Dave's doing what he can with what he has. It's, it's tough land to work. So, well, here we are. Dave will get paid. We're not going to stiff Dave anyway. Hi, Venus. She stays with me. She got a good beating last time she ran away. She learned her lesson. She only needed one of them. And when I say a good beating, I tagged her on the tail a couple times with my open hand, slapping her little hiney. Ditto, good girl. She's just the happiest dog. He's a super happy dog, too. He's just kind of an ornery dog. He's great with us. He's just, uh, it's all about making sure we're protected and safe at all times. And the dog just goes to no end to make sure of that. Every car, every bug, every truck, every motorcycle, it's all coming to attack us. And he's ready to fucking wreck it. Oh, dude, he almost took an old man off a moped here a couple years back. Trying to get him by his leg and get him off the moped. And uh, had I not got out there, I almost... I have no doubt it would have worked. Um, the old man almost went down just swerving. You know, dog scared him, come launching out of the woods at him. Old man swerved and almost fucking low sided that bike. And he, I'm telling you, the dude was every day of 80, zipping down the road on a freaking scooter, moped kind of thing, 40 mile an hour on a dirt road. Yeah, Chase wasn't cool with that. He wanted to eat this guy. He used to nip me in the legs when we would run and stuff and run the machine. He would get me in my leg and uh, I had to put a stop to that quick. He broke the skin a few times on me. Not Nothing bad. He just kind of pinches that skin real hard and a little toot to his and he pops it on you. Like popping a little zit on your leg kind of thing. That ain't nice, dude. He can fucking bite. And he ain't got much for teeth either, so he's like getting you with all of them. Hi, Venus. <laughs> Later, I'm trying to get you mud. Come on, booger boys. We'll make it through, I promise. See, just gotta do it like this. Gotta get you done big old work boots. <coughs> yup, and we wanna come down here and do some mud wrestling, little old journal, huh? And get our little nipple ball wet together. <sighs> just joking, we're not doing no nipple mud wrestling, you freaks. Frog gigging? I saw a frog, Dad. I, I smelled, smelled a frog fart. Frog fart. Freaky frog farts. It's about to pour out here. So I had an incident when I was a kid, an upsetting event out in the woods with a cabin. My brothers and some, a thunderstorm, and they went missing. I had to be all freaked out. So we had, used to have this camp. Ken Stein actually owned this camp. Ken Stein, if you're watching this, buddy, been a long time. Hope you're doing all right. If you're uh, on the other side already, what a cool camp you had, bro. Anyway, Ken Stein had a camp. It was up in like Eighth Lake, up in like Old Forge area, Racket Lake, somewhere up around there. And uh, 
it's set up on the side of like a hill overlooking a lake down at the bottom and um my brother dave and jeff went out fishing three four o'clock told be home before dark and it started pouring at like six o'clock sky cast over it let loose they got lost now all the woods looks like all the woods to them and all the hills look like all the hills and they don't even know which side they're on now so my pops pulled his truck up to the guardrail on the road it faced out to that dub on that freaking lake my dad could whistle something fierce and he put his headlights on shining over the edge of that cliff and sat there whistling and dad was the lighthouse beacon for these knuckleheads to get their asses back home took them hours they made it and it was thanks to dad that whistle and that like there was no way you'd go down searching for him it was pouring rain middle of the black night had me all worked up oh i was all awake i had chaos going on so anytime it kind of gets this real heavy storminess and i'm out in them woods i get an uneasy feeling on top of that i'm a big david politis fan dave you ever see this you the man buddy watch everything you do you're an interesting guy i think you're on the right track with that said we know about these events in the woods when you get a few different things all come together the stars align of sorts and it's uh well i don't want to say this this way because it sounds conceited but when you have a really high iq you're out by yourself you have a dog with you and a storm comes through fucking 50 50 where you're ever going to be seen again look it up david politis former uh california state police investigator runs a hell of a website now missing 411 you guys might not know this but we got a million people going missing every year hundred thousand were never being found every single year so every decade we're losing a million people well here's my question where's all the skeletons every 10 years we got a million skeletons should be laying out in the woods somewhere who's seeing them i'm not all right boys come on rain's starting so i appreciate you joining me for the walk and talk probably not even gonna edit none of this very little if i have to and uh one of my dark hearts will listen to this one appreciate you joining appreciate you listening to my bitch fest and uh appreciate you joining me for the uh the little experience we got going on out here and seeing how we're doing it and i'm up for all the advice and pointers any of you are willing to give me i'm a half knucklehead at best on some days come on venus it's just like a raccoon with her legs like this look at this you mucky little girl that's my good girl come on in all right i'm gonna cut you loose right there appreciate you joining thanks till next time uncle drunk out